Happy New Year. This is Londa at the Sunroom Sewing Studio. My husband Charlie's over there doing inventory. I told him I didn't have time to do it this year. And I am trying to narrow down my creative sewing projects because I have several events coming up early this year. The first one being taping as a designer for It's So Easy. I have three episodes to work on. Um, one of them is called Sweater Mishmash. So I went to our garage and pulled out my two big tubs of sweaters and felted wool. What you see in these gray tubs have now been rejected for the time being. Mm -hmm. I, I hit pay dirt this morning when I went to the local thrift store, not Goodwill, but the thrift store where everything was 50% off. So now I am zeroing down into combinations of things that will work together. And I'm sharing this just so that you can understand what I feel is the creative process. And that is gathering up your goodies and sorting through them by color and um, going through ideas, Pinterest, um, patterns that have caught your eye that you have collected. You collect patterns too, don't you? Uh -huh. And here's some work I'm doing on all the different um, things you can do to the hemlines of t-shirts to make them longer and to the currently popular tunics. I'm going to be coming up with an, a new um, design pamphlet on how you can do some different additions to my basic terrific tea pattern. So this is just the thinking process. I got to the point of going into my button boxes. And at that point, what did I tell you, Charlie? I don't know. I told you that if I pass on oh, yeah. to heaven anytime, whenever, that you are not to just take all my stuff to Goodwill because I've got really, really good stuff. Let me give you an eye idea of what I think is really good stuff. Here with um, two sweaters of Charlie's, and when your husband retires, he doesn't need as many clothes. So I have these and this vest. I don't know who this belonged to, but it's, it's got great color that goes with these sweaters. Just look at these wonderful options that I have for closure mechanisms. Look, look at this one here. On this side, it's just this shell type looking button. But if you turn it over, check that out. Isn't that wonderful color here with this sweater? I've got antique buttons. There used to be a gal at the quilt show in Houston. She's not been there lately. Um, but I always bought wonderful antique buttons from her. You see that I kind of group them in uh, similar types in plastic bags within my button box. This collection here is really exciting to me. Um, yeah. I can't wait to get going on this. When you go to the thrift store, look at the big sizes first because you're getting obviously more fabric in the big sizes than you would the small sizes. This one I believe is a 3X t-shirt, but that's just a lot of wonderful fabric. Here's another button. Look at this wonderful abalone button, how it blends in there with all of the rest of these pretty greens. All right, and then I always seem to gravitate these days towards gray. I guess that's because my hair has now become silver. Um, this piece goes way back to my shop days. Look at this wonderful antique button. Just really, really good stuff. Some of these are newer, you know, when Joann's puts their um, buttons on at half price, you may want to go down and just see what gems might be hidden there in the common button lines. Here's something to collect if you're into black and white at all, which personally I'm not. Stark black and white, I prefer gray. Um, but knits that are stripes, those always cut cross grain, just make good little joining pieces. Here, let me show you what I mean by that. Here's a pattern, a garment made for my twin, twi <laughs> twin set tweaks design. And do you see the little pizzazz that that black and white stripe cut into strips and just put in there as it curls, creates. I have to give credit for that realization to my pal Marcy Tilton. All right, let's look at some more buttons. 
here in this combination, this is definitely going to be some of my memento upcycle work. This sweater belonged to my late brother, as did this one over here. But this group I really liked. In fact, I bought this sweater at full price, big four dollars, the other day at Goodwill. I had found most of the things that I wanted to buy at Goodwill, but I just couldn't make myself buy them since I knew today, January 1st, would be on half price. Here's another button. Look, on this side it's abalone, but if you flip it over, look how wonderful those colors are blending in with, with this sweater. Some more antique pieces. So you can see what I've done is I've just gone through my button box, pulled out everything that might work with that collection of, of goodies, and it doesn't mean, obviously, that all of those will work, but as I start to create what I have, my stuff, will definitely guide me in, in what I put together. As I look at this here through the camera, I'm not real sure about this sweater mixed in, but I do like these. All right. And then over here, uh, even a t-shirt that my dear daughter got me for Christmas is in the creating pile. Oh, and this piece, check this out. This was a Goodwill normally marked at $8, but it's a combination of a regular jersey, um, I think it's probably cotton or rayon jersey, but it's mixed with a sheer cut on the bias, so just fun things. But look right in here. Do you see the braided effect with some of the sheer and some of the fabric from the garment itself, lots of raw edges, raw edges everywhere. Just really fun, very boho, fun, fun, fun. I would guess that this piece probably originally cost oh, $50, $80, and I got it for four. All right, so that's kind of the sweater project, sweater mishmash. We'll see what happens. There's There's one piece of fabric in here that I bought at Joann's. Um, when it became available last year, I had my eye on it. It's, it's really needle felting. And um, because it was on the bolt with the gray side out, I think it just didn't catch people's eyes. Then it went to the clearance bin. See, here's what it looked like on the bolt. And I got it at 60% off. I'm just not really sure what I'm going to do with that yet. All right, then over here are knits. These are pieces, well, yeah, I thought I might do a Pokemon um, fun t-shirt. My grandson will think that's pretty cool. Can you see here how I have taken um, ideas that I had on my Pinterest boards and I've actually printed them out? I just really have to have the idea right here with my stuff. Now I can promise you what I come up with will not be exactly that, but that's an idea. Here's some things that I found in my wardrobe. I have two different shirts. Gee whiz, I wore this one on the previous It's So Easy taping. I'm just not real fond of it anymore. Here's a skirt with a flounce around the bottom and I really don't wear it. And here's some fabric that was in my green stash. So I'm thinking maybe those need a new life put together somehow. This is a wonderful Tencel knit that I got from Vogue Fabric years ago. Here's another shirt, and I know in my purple stash box I've got more of that fabric and a skirt that I already decided I'd never wear again. Do you make things you never wear again? Yeah, me too. Do you buy things you probably will never wear again? Uh-huh, so don't beat yourself up. Okay, here's some scraps of a wonderful two-piece um, dress that I have and some things that go with it. Here's a really expensive piece of fabric I bought down in um, New Orleans this last summer. I need to get some more of this fabric because it mixes so very well with it. But again, from Pinterest, I have some ideas of things that I might, ways that I might use, just a small piece of really gorgeous fabric. And here's some more upcycle memento things. This uh, man's polo shirt, 
here's an idea page. I love these where there's, it's a knit, but the back of it looks like this. It's pretty much known as French Terry. So I, it's a good time now to go shopping in the men's department especially. You'll find lots of great deals. I kept mentioning my stash boxes. So when we made the big move from Illinois to wonderful, warm Tennessee, um, in April of 2016, I was forced to reduce my stash. So this is how I do it. In these bins, some as you can see are overflowing. Um, look here at the blacks. Do you see that the one in the middle is the knit blacks and then I have knit black pieces and down here in the middle I have woven blacks. But generally they're just divided by color. I'm trying really, really hard to limit myself to just this much stash. And I can tell you, as, as I've shared with my husband, and he has seen for himself in our travels of past years, that that is a very modest stash, especially my Texas friends. You, dear ladies, have stashes many, many times larger than this. So this is our good stuff. And as I was... Uh, explaining to my husband this morning that yes, I have this wonderful 20 by 30 studio full of things, but I can do stuff with my things. I can create things, I can sell them on Etsy, I can create patterns, I can do blog posts, um, I can make gifts for friends, gifts for family. And I, I would just compare that as I did for him to his baseball card collection. We could go and see a picture of um, two of these shelving units holding his baseball cards with which he can do nothing but look at them. And an another thing I thought of the other day was when people say to me, you sew? People still sew? I, I thought about it later and I thought, yeah, and men go hunting and men go fishing and they, just like I can go buy clothing, they can go buy meat, they can go buy fish, so why do we do these things? Because we enjoy it. And for me, um, doing something that I enjoy, creating something, and here at the Sunrim Sewing Studio, teaching young girls how to do that, to enrich their lives and give them a way to show other people how much they love them. Yep, that's just what I'm about these days. So that concludes it. I'm not going to show you what I look like today because I'm in create mode. No makeup, hair not done. Great way to start the new year. Fast forward to January 4th, and this is what I had done to start the morning with the jacket on the left. By evening it was finished. You'll see that on my blog in a couple of days. And on the right is where I got to yesterday on the 4th. Um, afternoon till evening. This one will be super quick to finish up and I think I just might wear this when I tape this sweater mishmash episode for It's So Easy. So there you have it. You can see and read all about the garments I create if you subscribe to my blog. Join me for Creative Fashion Sewing where you'll find oodles of inspiration and detailed how-tos. For a constant stream of sewing fun, follow me and subscribe to my social media channels.